Hey guys, the Amazing Caleb here. Now, we all know that Suzanne Blakesley is an incredible voice artist. The reason why Linda Hunt won't reprise her role like in God of War 2 is because, originally, Gaia would be voiced by Linda Hunt again, like in God of War 2. It is possible that the developers thought her voice did not fit Gaia as an antagonist, as opposed to the wise Gaia from God of War 2. That's why Suzanne Blakesley was brought in to give Gaia that powerful, angry, and menacing vibe for God of War 3. Look, I know that Linda Hunt only did the narration for the opening credits of God of War 3, but let's just say if PS5 decided to do a remastered version of all God of War games again, and they asked me to continue the narration for Linda Hunt, I'd be thrilled! So sit back, relax, and enjoy my Linda Hunt's narrative impression for God of War 3. With the death of Poseidon, the sea's leash is undone, and the fury of the ocean is unleashed. The city of Mount Olympus, once gleaming with divine grandeur, is now a watery tome. The once proud temples and palaces are now mere shadows beneath the unforgiving waves. Kratos, now a mere mortal, yet with the power of a god, stands before the throne of Zeus. The once mighty king of the gods looks down upon him, his eyes a tempest of anger and fear. With Gaia's betrayal echoing in his ears, Kratos plummets through the abyss of the underworld, a fiery tempest of anger burning within his soul. Kratos found himself in the depths of Hades. The realm of the dead mirrors the chaos above, ravaged by the vengeance of the titans. The souls of the damned wailed in the shadowy corridors, echoes of the living world's turmoil reaching into the abyss. Ephesus the god of smithery, rise in pain, his skin, once radiant with the glow of molten gold, is now bruised and burned from Zeus's unforgiving wrath. The battle between the ghost of Sparta and the lord of the underworld unfolds in a dance of death and fury. With the death of Hades, the chains of the underworld loosen. The once orderly realm of the dead descends into chaos, as lost souls wander aimlessly through the shattered halls. Kratos lands a final devastating blow on the weakened Gaia, exacting vengeance for her treachery. For it was true. The titans were not to be trusted. Their words were a tapestry of half-truths and deceit, 
each thread leading him deeper into the labyrinth of their vengeful intentions. With the death of Helios, the sun vanished from the sky, plunging the world into an eternal twilight. The once bright and bustling city of Olympia is now a shadow of his former self. The cobblestone street slicks with rain, a stark reminder of the gods' fading power. With the death of Hermes, the frenzied whispers of commerce and deceit fall silent. The once swift messenger of the gods, now a lifeless corpse. The sandals of Hermes are now in Kratos' possession. The flies that once buzzed around Hermes' body, symbolizing the greed and trickery he embodied, scattered in the face of Kratos' wrath, only to find themselves swatted away by his swift hand. Hercules, the mighty son of Zeus, lies lifeless in the sewers. His dreams of godhood shattered by the very hands he had once envied. The air thick with the scent of battle and the acrid stench of death hangs heavily around the fallen god. Kronos, the last of the mighty titans, now lies vanquished in the abyss of Tartarus. His monstrous visage forever etched in the annals of history as a grim reminder of the price of power and the lengths to which the gods will go to maintain their grip upon it. Kratos did not take Hera's words lightly. Those who dare to defame the innocent Pandora shall taste his fury. With her death, Hera's once lush garden transforms into a barren wasteland. The vibrant colors of her once beloved flora, now replaced by a palette of grays and browns. The lifeblood of her sanctuary drains away with her power. At long last, the battle between gods unfolds in the fiery embrace of the flame of Olympus. Thunder echoes through the chamber as Zeus and Kratos, each a monument of fury and power, clash in the dance of divine wrath. It was not the victory as Kratos had hoped, but the emptiness of the box was not a sign of defeat. It was a revelation, a truth hidden within the very fabric of his existence. Fear the ultimate weapon, the very essence of what the gods had tried to contain within Pandora's box. Yet amidst the chaos, Kratos clung to the very ember of hope that had fueled his relentless pursuit. No hope? Perhaps not in the way Kratos had thought. Yet as he descends into the chrism abyss, a new understanding dawns. The power within him is not one of destruction, but of redemption. At long last, Kratos stood tall, the lifeless body of Zeus at his feet. The heavens trembled as the fairy fabric of Olympus was torn asunder by the final cataclysmic battle. The once mighty god lay defeated, his reign of terror over. But as the dust settled, the true cost of Kratos' victory came into stark relief. To restore balance to the shadowed world, Kratos made the ultimate sacrifice. With the power of hope surging from the wound in his chest, a brilliant light pierces the heavens, illuminating the desolate lands below. Could this be the dawn of a new era? Or is it merely the end of a tortured soul? But Kratos did not die, 
For hope is a force that cannot be contained, nor destroyed. It is the essence that fuels the human spirit. And as the light of hope spreads across the world, so too does the legend of the ghost of Sparta. He can finally forgive himself for the atrocities he committed under Ares's manipulation. A family he himself murdered. But the past of his tormented soul is not so easily buried. The whispers of his dark deeds follow him, even as he seeks to leave his bloody history behind. But on this day, the man, the legend, Kratos, will now move forward, away from the ruins of Greece, the shackles of Sparta, and the crumbling halls of Olympus.